So is it your very first day promo day? Yeah, yeah. And, and and pretty much our, our well, we we, actually, we got here late in the day yesterday, but it's pretty much our first day ever in in Paris, ever in France, actually. So sun is shining. Yeah, music's good. We like it. Yeah, so far so good. So let us know how a Swedish guy, an American guy, you met uh, in Los Angeles, right? And How was it possible? Well, I think we both had a similar vision of what we wished to accomplish as musicians. And that included uh, going out and trying to meet the band that you wanted to form, right? So me, I moved from Sweden to LA to study music at Musicians Institute, which is where I met Parker. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much where we uh, where we met and things took off from there. Yeah, we, we were pretty much, um, there, wasn't, there wasn't really too many other guys walking around there who We really uh, were in, into the kind of music that we were, so inevitably we, we kind of just crossed paths. And I think Leo sent me a message or something. He's like, "Hey man, you know you look cool. You want to start a band?" And I was like, "Fuck yeah, dude, let's do it." Best, best <laughs> message I ever sent. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so, are you fond of heavy metal? Both. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, we, yeah. We love the heavy metals, man. So we can, of course, listen to to your very references. Of course, it reminds me uh, Iron Maiden sometimes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we love Maiden, of course. <laughs> It's a good choice, right? So is it your very first metal band together? Or you, did you got a, a heavy metal project before? We both had um, different constellations and projects that we've done in the past, but I think this is the uh, the first band that both of us have had where it feels like, all right, this is it. You know, it, it just it clicked. We know this is what we want to do. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, prior to this, Leo and I would pretty much only played in smaller uh, local bands, playing around in, in little clubs or whatever, but nothing, nothing really too formal. This is like the first actual project that we really, uh, we really went all in on. Yeah. By the way, over the very first shows in Germany on your European tour. Oh man, I mean, they they completely uh, completely blew us away. We really had um, we didn't really have much expectation because you know we're a new band and, and really we had only played as Wings of Steel uh, three live shows before we came here to Europe. So um, we knew we weren't sure how many people would show up we weren't sure how people would like the live sound but um i mean we played the first two shows we did was the no playback festival and then the keep it true festival and um yeah i mean we we were first band of the day at both of those festivals and we you know we start there's maybe a few people in there but as we start playing and then you know by like the second third song the, the hall is filled with people and we're just like holy shit <laughs> you know there's all these people who came here just got up early to come and, and see us and it was uh it, it was really uh really incredible and how does how does it feel to to uh, like on festival to be like uh, the challenger you know some i mean maybe few people know knows you but yeah it's a great yeah. challenge right I think I think that's a terrific spot to start off because I don't think a lot of people are expecting a lot mm -hmm. from the opening band. Of course, the, the 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 few people there who knew who we were, they were expecting a good show and and they got it. But for those of uh, you know those there who did not know who we were and they were just kind of hanging out by the food or the merch or whatever, as soon as we hit that first note, they. Um, they got their money's worth or so we like to think so so yeah i think it's a great spot for us this tour around to start on first spots at festivals and see how the reaction is mm -hmm. i mean yeah i i think it was you know it was exciting to play in that spot because you know you were you were curious to see how people react but i mean really at the end of the day we were just happy to be at the festival happy to be there playing live and doing our thing and um And I, yeah, we were just, uh, the, the energy that we got from the, the crowd was just, uh, it was great. Yeah, because I'll tell you, man, putting out our first thing in 2019, no, sorry, 2022, my bad, 2022, it's a long time without playing a lot of shows. So we, we had a, uh, a severe hunger for getting out there and putting the music in front of people. And it's good to, for people to have a good surprise, you know, maybe Absolutely. The, oh, yeah. the people don't know you, but... Sometimes when you know heavy metal bands, you know, like legends, and most of the time you are quite disappointed, you know? 
Sometimes, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Pretty uh, do-it-yourself project. Uh, of course, you have the help of Olivier Garnier today in Paris for the promo day. But it's a quite do-it-yourself project. And yeah, how can you manage to to live your life as musicians without record label? And what's the best thing to stand out? You know. I mean, we really. Um we really started doing everything ourselves just out of necessity because we didn't have, we didn't know anybody. We didn't have anybody to, to work with us. But I mean, the thing we realized pretty quickly after we put out the EP and then uh, continued along with our journey was that um, we we're actually, even though it's a lot of work to do everything ourselves, it's actually, um, we're actually better off doing things on our own as opposed to if we had, enter into uh, any of these agreements that we've received from the labels this far. So um, it started out of necessity, but uh, at this point, you know, now it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a choice. I mean, I would say too, we're not, we're not like the, uh, we're not uh, very opposed to working with the label, but fundamentally it, you know, it comes down to this. We need to have the, the freedom to be able to write the best possible music that we can write. And we need to make sure that the the business of what we're doing is taking care of the music. Um, we don't want to get signed and get stuck in a deal, and then we're basically just there so somebody can make money. You know, that's not you know that's not we we do what we do because it's a passion and we want to share our music with the world. That's that's really what it comes down to. You know, so every every week, so many many music you know written. I've heard that uh, last year, uh, the some uh, music was released you know it was so huge that it was like uh the entirety music for uh like two southern years you know it's like um, there is more and more music on, on, on online and um what's the secret to 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 yeah to stand out to to be uh, the unique uh, the unique band to see you know it's uh, you have to to be yourselves and uh, to be maybe true to yourself right well yeah i, I think you pretty much pretty nailed much it, it right yeah. there you you got to stay true to what it is that you believe and stay true to the concept right and th there's a lot of things that can trap you along the way that might force you or influence you to change your original vision but i say you know intuition is always the thing to go with and if you can find like-minded musicians who, who work in the same way we've been fortunate enough to have that between the two of us i think you nailed it you just stay true to what you do and go from there that's what it is i mean there's a i mean there's a lot of stuff out there but um i i think the, the quality of what you do and the energy and the passion that you put into the music. I mean, this is anything an artist or anybody creates. I think that that really speaks for itself and that it, it cuts through all the clutter, I would say. Um, did you did you study that at school when you met uh, when you met at school in uh, Los Angeles? I mean, I mean, the business part, except, you know, of course, uh, you know, great riffs are great. But the business part is quite hard for musicians, right? Did you yeah, you know, we, we read about like what roles people have in the industry and what they do and stuff. But yeah, they don't really tell you about like how to get in touch with these people. And the truth of the matter is that the real world in the music business is not in that book. It's out there, you know, so you have to go out there and you have to experience it. Yeah, I mean, it's what they teach you in school. It's not necessarily practical. I mean, it's I think it's like this in many many occupations um you know the, the theory of it is one thing but you're actually going to learn how to do it when you go out into the world and you, you do it for yourself and that's that's where we've learned what we yeah. know really yeah I, I think just a big tip in general is just, you know don't compromise your vision mm -hmm. don't compromise it's all, your vision it's, it's all about the the passion and the music and what we love doing yeah and retain your ownership if you can <laughs> yes <laughs> um by the way, um, wh where did you record? Did you record in Los Angeles? Your these ten, ten tracks? Yeah. So actually, we recorded it all um, at my my parents' place. We live in this uh, this area called Thousand Oaks, which is just kind of uh, just a little bit outside, like north of Los Angeles, but it's pretty much LA. Um, but 
so long story short, my uh, the house was built in like the 60s. Uh, the previous on in the 60s, a lot of houses were built with like these little bomb shelters because everybody was paranoid about nuclear war. Um, so I guess the previous owner had like kind of filled it in with dirt a little bit, but then 15, 20 years ago, I think my parents renovated the, the backyard and they found it there. So they, they dug out all the dirt and they cleaned it, but, um, they weren't really doing with it, anything with it. So then fast forward to 2020, Leo and I were living in Hollywood and we needed a place to uh, record our stuff. So I said, oh, I got it. So we went out uh, to my parents' place and we, we set up down there and, and we recorded heavy metal music in a fucking bomb shelter. So, <laughs> um, yeah. But and then and then, of course, the, um, we did all, all vocals, guitars, bass, everything at home. And then um, we did the drums. We went to a professional studio to do the drums because recording drums is a much more uh, intricate process you need you know many microphones and you want a good engineer a good sounding room and all that stuff so we figured we would just go but uh, everything else is basically recorded at home mm -hmm. yeah drums are horrific to recall right <laughs> oh my god there's a lot of stuff that goes yeah. into it yeah yeah and you you have the chance today uh in 2024 to to record where you want actually you can you yeah. I can I know bands that they recorded in worldwide, you know, and uh, <laughs> it's it's like a yeah. chance today to you can record everything where you want. Mm -hmm. I, it's it's the way to go. It's great. Let me know um, about the um, the artwork, and uh, it's pretty similar to the to the EP, the artwork with the the two horses. Is, is it like, a, what's what's the link of between the EP and the album? I, th I think both the EP and the album, they play a lot with the, with contrasts, right? And everything in, the, in between, lyrics, artwork, even the, the music itself, it has journeys that it kind of goes through. It's not just this one thing throughout the entire song, it, it changes. Um, we, we, we think that we, we like to think that we have a common sound for ourselves that's kind of, you know, it's it's there on every single song and the artwork should always reflect the music so the fact that there is a re reoccurring theme in there that's that's just kind of that that's how we like it with this just how we chose to roll with it we we like the artwork um the man behind the artwork his name is spencer uh, caligari um and uh, we actually we, we met him out in uh, in thousand oaks mm -hmm. uh when um <laughs> we were looking for someone to do the artwork and we we're browsing through Instagram through all these local tattoo artists and we came across his page and the stuff that he had done like the the oil like the drawings and stuff like that they were all very in line with the vision that we had for the artwork so then we kind of just presented him with a very very rough sketch <laughs> of what it was that we wanted for the artwork he sent us a first draft and it was magic just like that I mean I think it's it's kind of cool we didn't really think about it at the time but when we you know, when we came up with the kind of basic idea, you know, I think like wings of steel. Okay, it's cool to have two these two stallions, and they have the wings. And I think it's it's kind of a cool, uh, you know, almost like a mascot for us a little bit. You know, um, the artwork uh, reminds me like a kind of uh, fantasy, fantasy artwork. Um, um, uh, do the lyrics are uh, kind of. Uh, fantasy or stuff like this or is there a story or is there something a link again i think that um we, we try to have the album reflect the con uh, context of our uh, or the content of the album mm -hmm. uh, so the the lyrics the music the artwork they all meet in one place so you you can definitely tie you know the fantasy thing if you want to call it that like fantasy into it in the sense where it's not just blatant and straight and it, it's it's a whole kind of journey right mm -hmm. just as within any kind of given fantasy mm -hmm. um so let me know about this song liar in love <laughs> is it kind of a true story <laughs> I'm, sh I'm sure it's a true story to ma very many people mm -hmm. i think that's why people like it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean we, yeah. we always try to we always try to write music from a more uh, like lyrically and everything we we try to uh 
we try to leave the the meaning of the songs a little bit open for interpretation. So even even if we may have written it around a certain story or event or something, you know, we, we really at the end of the day, I think the the song means whatever it means to you, the listener. And I think um, I think it's very you know we feel it's very important to protect that and preserve that and encourage that um, with people because that's. I mean, that's how we personally experience music. It's not necessarily, even if a song has a story that on the surface appears to be something different, maybe you you, you see deeper into it metaphorically and you, you kind of see through it, or maybe it's cool on the surface too. It's it's however you want to, uh, however you want to feel it. All right, so you have two shows in, uh, in France, Paris and Lille. What, yeah. what to expect? Yep. What to expect for French fans? Um, well, I, I think this is going to be a very interesting encounter because I think both band and fans are very curious, right? I'm very excited to see how the French audience will react to our music, and I'm sure they're very curious to see whatever we're all about, you know? We, we've heard great things. Uh, we've had a lot of anticipation for these shows, so we do expect a really, really good show. Um, so yeah, we're going to be there. We're going to deliver on, on our end and, uh, and we hope to meet as many people as possible and make as many new French fans as we can. Yeah, we're, we're, re we're really excited. These, um, these shows here in France have had a lot of hype. There's a lot of anticipation for it. And it's, uh, yeah, we're, we're just, we're really excited. It does seem like there's something about France. So it'll be very, very interesting to see what that is. Mm -hmm. But two shows in France and of course eight are. Uh, one in G one in Belgium, I think, or in and of course eight or nine in Germany. Germany is the is the most uh, heavy metal or the most metal country in Europe, right? I mean, I, th I think it's it's the most central place for heavy metal. Yeah, in terms mm -hmm. of why we have so many shows there, it's just kind of how it worked out this time with our logistics. Yeah, it's, it's just it basically <laughs> it, it came down to the the opportunities that we could get because again, you know, coming into this tour. There's three live shows under the name of Wings of Steel, so I, I, it's it's understandable why it's it's maybe more difficult to secure bookings uh, from that position, and then also logistically, Leo uh, Leo's currently living in Germany, so we have a place to stay. It's easier for us to go there, and we don't have to uh, uh, it's, uh, expenses and stuff like that. So, but of course, there's you know, I mean, we we want to go to all corners of Europe, you know, and we, we have, will. We we we're we really. Uh, we really want to get out there for all of them. And I'm pretty sure now that you you got um, you already got um, new new stuff for for something new maybe next year or will you record soon a, a new maybe AP, EP or album? Yeah, so I, I mean I'll just say our you know our our process of writing songs it never. Um, It, it never really stops. I mean, we're constantly, individually, we're always coming up with riffs and ideas and melodies and demos and all kinds of stuff. So, um, so we, there's we have plenty of uh, we have plenty of ammunition for a new uh, for a new record. But I do think that um, uh, our, our plan this year is we're basically gonna we're gonna do this European tour. We're gonna try to get a tour in the U.S. and then we're also going to see so either before or after that. We're Leo and I are gonna get together and. In, uh, in California, we're gonna uh, start writing for a uh, new album, which will be should be released sometime in 2025. So, and the, do the USA good place for a band like you, like uh, heavy metal, traditional heavy metal stuff? There's, I think there's a there's a big um, there's a huge huge. I mean, it's just same in Europe. I, there's a huge huge audience, but It's different from Europe in a sense that uh, we don't have the same festival uh, culture with all the festivals, and there's yeah. um, the, the opportunities are a little bit they're a little bit different there. But um, I mean, in terms of our audience, where we see our fans coming from, it's it's split pretty evenly between uh, Europe and the U.S. And I um, I do think that there's a lot of people out there who would uh, who would really dig what we do. We just have to get out there and play live for them. Yeah. Pretty much. I have a suspicion that, and we can already kind of see it in the U.S. too. There are more like smaller heavy metal oriented festivals that are starting to pop up, and mm -hmm. they are get gaining like more and more visitors uh, for every year. And I think that's what you really need because, like Parker says, 
there's a huge audience out there. It's just so spread out. That's mm -hmm. all. So to be able to gather everyone at places like festivals is going to be huge. And we're, we're hoping to ride that wave. Mm -hmm. Great, guys. So I'm really thankful for, for this interview. And uh, have a, yeah, great shows in uh, Paris and Lille. And hope to, to see you next time, right? Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you for having okay, us. Okay, guys. Thank you. Bye. Rock on. Peace. Bye.